Hello and welcome back to Simply Gregster EV. Today we, are, we have my 2023 Mini Cooper Electric. And the question I get asked often is, how fast do EV batteries degrade, especially within that fat first year? This is something that I get asked by friends, family, and even customers here at our shop. So today we're going to go through that. This car has about 18,000 kilometers. We've had it since uh, December of 2023, so we're now mid-March, so roughly about 15 months, I would say. There's about 18,000 kilometers on this car. So we're going to check the state of health, and we're just gonna go over a couple topics um, within the battery de degradation, try to solve some myths, and figure out exactly how much this car has degraded within a, just over a year of ownership. So come along with us and we'll try to answer some questions. So for those unfamiliar with the Mini Cooper Electric, it has a 32.7 kilowatt hour battery, which uh, 28.9, 29 kilowatts roughly is, is usable. So you have a upper P is you have a um, upper buffer and the lower buffer as well, may uh, roughly about, I would say 1.75 kilowatts, something like that. So it's never really at 0% or at 100%. Uh, battery charging habits on this car, there's no way to set charge limit on this car to 80%, 90% or whatever you want to uh, use for, for your daily charge limit. So there, it has seen quite a lot of times where it's been charged to 100%. This car roughly, I would estimate, has about 25 to 30 rapid charger sessions on it as well. Some of those have been deep charges from about 5% or 10% up to about 90%. So that's something to keep in mind as well when we check the state of health. Chemistry on this car is NMC chemistry. Uh, again, lithium ion. So it's not a um, lithium ion phosphate or, or LFP pack. This pack is a bit similar to what you would find in uh, BMW i3. In fact, the drive motor up front is pretty much exactly what you will find in a BMW i3. They basically went through the parts bin and got everything to work in this car and have actually made quite a good package. So let's, let's dive into it. Let's dive into the tech side and the battery health side. I just wanted to go through a bit about the car and a bit of its charging background and history for this film. There's no point just shoving on the uh, scan tool uh, if you don't know the history or driving habits be behind the car. So as I said, we've had this car for about uh, 15 months already. We got it December 2023. It's still on the winter tires. We featured this car before. It is, the mileage on it is correct. So I'm not making it up, sorry. And the mileage on it is correct. But yeah, this is our daily driver. No issues with it up until now. Well, no issues on it whatsoever. But yeah, this is the fairly standard uh, Mini Cooper Electric. Probably one of the best cars I owned. So let's get into the car and we'll go through the battery. We're in the car now, uh, it's off. I use a VP OBD2 dongle. You could get these off Amazon. I think they're about 25 or $30 Canadian. Uh, I've had this for quite a while. It's good for quick coding. It's good for uh, using here around the shop. A customer comes in with a check engine light, just throw it in quickly and get the app open on, on your phone to figure out what's wrong with it. So we're gonna be using this today in the car. This car still does have an OBD2 port. I know I know EVs having OBD2 ports, but unfortunately that's the standard. So we're gonna plug this in. This is right down here, somewhere. It's right over here. That's in. We're going to turn the car on. The car is on now. There we go. We're at 68% state of charge in this car. Uh, I didn't want to go up to, like I said, I don't really charge too often up to 100%. We are going to fire up the app. The app we're using here is a car scanner. You could buy this on the app store, wherever you have a, an iPhone or a um, Android device. So we're gonna click connect. It's gonna take a moment to connect. We're connected, it's gonna connect, to, it's just gonna take a moment to, to fire up. Okay, so we got connected here. I actually had to uh, turn the camera off and disable the Wi-Fi, turn off CarPlay because it kept connecting. So now we are connected onto the app as what you can see. 
and we're going to click all sensors. Again, this is an app that you can purchase off the App Store. It's not much. I think it was like 10 or $15. So we're going to go down to here. And it's going to say, it's going to say uh, battery state of charge. We're at uh, 68, sorry, 67.8%. It's displaying 68% state of charge. It is saying battery state of charge minimum is 11.5%. Uh, maximum state of charge is 96.1. So essentially what that's saying is there is quite a lower limit buffer on uh, this car. Actually quite, quite a lot of buffer on the lower limit. So when it's actually displaying close to 0%, you only have about, I would say, roughly 10% of usable there. And on the upper limit, you're going to have about 4%, maybe 5% difference. Uh, again, I'm not an expert in this. I'm, this is just something, this is just what I've read and I've learned. We're still getting into the EV marketplace even in the uh, shop. So if I'm wrong, please leave a, a comment. But our battery state of health at uh, 17,080 kilometers is 97% state of health. So what that's telling me is that's roughly in line with what some studies have uh, shown is that your initial, your initial battery de de degradation will be quite a lot within the first year of ownership and then it will stabilize and then towards the end of the battery life it will really start dropping off at uh, that end. We all know that sitting at uh, close to 100% limit kills batteries, heat kills batteries, um, but we're at 97%. So that study also said that batteries will degrade on average 2.3% per year. And I would say based on that study I read and what we're seeing here, we're right on average. We're right on average in terms of battery degradation. What's going to be interesting to see is if we check this in six months or eight months time, how much further the battery has degraded or has it reached that point of uh, being stabilized. I remember we had that uh, Hertz rental Tesla in here and the Tessie app was showing us, I think it was 94% state of health or 95% state of health, 86,000 kilometers. So it's gonna be interesting to see, this is something I'm going to follow up in, um, in terms of if we reach that stabilize, if we, if we stabilize and it's going to degrade a lot faster or are we gonna continue seeing that two to 2.3% per year? So that's something that could be interesting coming up in a, um, in a future film. Again, we're still, I'm still getting used to the um, battery tech. We're still getting used to the battery tech. So if I'm wrong about this, please leave a comment in the comment section. And if you've made it this far, think about liking and, and subscribing. We have a lot of new people watching the films, but uh, not a lot of new subscribers. So maybe just, just keep that in mind. Well, I hope this answers some questions in terms of uh, battery degradation. Um, if you wish, if you are purchasing or you're wishing to purchase a used EV, perhaps get yourself the uh, VP dongle and the car scanner app. And just before you buy the car, throw it on there, bring up the, uh, the data PIDs. I'll, I'll show them up here. Bring up the uh, data PIDs and you can see roughly what you're buying versus towards the uh, mileage on the car, what your battery health is going to be. Uh, again, a lot of people make, um, a big deal about battery health and you'll be changing your battery every two or three years like a cell phone it doesn't work like that modern evs have uh, proper thermal management proper cooling to slow down that degradation cycle a lot of the myths and reality unfortunately come from the first generation nissan leafs which have um, an air-cooled battery and degraded quite fast so no i think we're all good here nothing to uh, worry about and we'll follow up again in a few months with the, again, the same app. And maybe we'll throw uh, ITSA on it, the uh, BMW software, and to see what we could find in terms of um, degradation. And if, if the car unlocks those buffers as the battery degrades. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna say like, I haven't noticed any difference in terms of range on this car or in terms of performance. Uh, even in, in, in the winter time, this winter has been quite mild. So I haven't noticed it. Uh, maybe it's something that we'll see in the future, but we'll we'll cover it. So th thanks again for watching. Sorry about the uh, long-winded speech, and we'll see you in the uh, next film. Just wanted to add in uh, another way that you can check the battery health is by getting the car down to um, zero percent and uh, charging it back up to a hundred percent and see how much energy uh, went back in into the car. I don't suggest doing this on a, a AC charger, so on a level two charger at home. I think a, um, a DC fast charger would be better for uh, doing this test. 
as the energy loss will be less on a DC fast charger versus the AC charger at home. And generally those, you could get a proper um, receipt of how much energy actually went into the car. Yeah, there's still going to be a bit of a loss um, in terms of um, energy, but it's going to be less on the uh, DC charger. So I just, I just wanted to point that out that if you were a bit unsure about the state of health, if you didn't believe what the car scanner said, you could just test the um, the health of the uh, battery by seeing how much capacity it actually has left. And uh, like I said, I suggest doing that on a DC fast charger.